Stan Jibalisco here, continuing our tutorial in regards to the Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, published by McGraw-Hill, October 2013, the third edition, edited by me, the previous editions done by Traster and Lisk. Basically, the improvements in this edition involve redrawing of all of the art. I redrew all of the diagrams and added some new ones, edited the text, added some new material, and the publisher saw fit to come out with a spiral binding in the paperback version, which is really handy uh, because it'll lay flat on your workbench. And as I've alluded to before, I recommend the paper book for your workbench so that your coffee or your Diet Mountain Dew will get it wet, and that's all the damage it'll do if you spill it. Requires no boot up, needs no battery, and acquires no bugs or viruses. Let's turn to page 69. Look at figure 4-13. This is a full-wave bridge power supply complete with an LC filter and voltage regulation. Uh, this uh, particular diagram shows a 12-volt DC output and a 120-volt AC input. So, let's just go with that assumption and look more closely at the bridge rectifier circuit itself and see how exactly does that produce a 120 hertz ripple frequency here with 60 hertz AC input. The uh, secret to that is that it takes advantage of both halves of the cycle. If you look at an AC wave cycle, let's just draw an AC wave right here. Just, you know, your simple sine wave. This is one sixtieth of a second right here. That's one complete cycle. A half a cycle, therefore, is one one hundred and twentieth of a second. Well, a half wave power supply only takes advantage of one half of the waves, so you get a 60 hertz ripple frequency at the output, but a full wave supply, in effect, takes the other side of the wave and inverts it to give you pulsating DC, and that frequency, each pulse, takes one one hundred and twentieth of a second, and that's why you get 120 hertz ripple. Full wave power supplies are preferable to half wave supplies for a variety of reasons. One, they're easier on the transformer because they don't pump it. They don't, it's not a lopsided load, it's a more balanced load. The other reason is that a 120 hertz ripple is easier to filter than a 60 hertz ripple. But look very closely now at these four diodes and the way that they are arranged. Note the anodes, which are the arrows, and the cathodes, which are the little lines. Electrons can flow only against the arrow in a diode like this as it's drawn. So, electrons come out of the load into the positive terminal, and they can flow through either this diode or this diode depending upon which part of the cycle we're talking about. Similarly, electrons can flow through either this diode or this diode and come out of the negative terminal and go into the load. Which of these diodes happens to be doing the work at any given time depends on the part of the cycle that we're talking about. This is the transformer secondary. Electrons flow back and forth like this one complete cycle takes a sixtieth of a second, that's like this. One half of a cycle takes one one hundred and twentieth of a second. We get a pulse of negative uh, polarity here every, well, one hundred and twenty times a second. And we get a pulse of positive polarity there that coincides with the pulses of negative polarity here. So that's why we have four diodes. These two diodes take care of the positive 
pole of the DC, one during one half of the cycle and the other during the other half of the AC cycle. Similarly, these two diodes do the work for the negative pole, one of them during one half of the cycle and the other one during the other half of the cycle. So you get, if you could, if the diodes would light up when they're doing work and you could watch them and you could slow down that frequency so you could actually see the sequence, it would look kind of cool. I, I'd like to see a video that demonstrates that, but unfortunately my video technical expertise is not yet up to the level to be able to do that kind of animation. But I hope someday to get there. I'm working on it. Meanwhile, I recommend the Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Again, edited by me, 3rd edition, October 2013, spiral binding, no battery, no boot up, no bugs, no viruses. You spill your diet mountain dew on it, all it gets is wet. And it's made of heavy stock paper, too. It's a little bit pricey because of this uh, sophisticated binding, but it'll last a long time in your workshop. It'll take a beating. Uh, what, what tablet computer or uh, tablet PC can do that? And this thing only costs something like 29 bucks or 25 bucks. Maybe at Amazon you can get it cheaper than that. You won't get any tablet computer for that kind of a price. And if you spill your Diet Mountain Dew on a tablet computer, well, I don't know exactly what will happen. I've never tried it. I don't ever intend to try it either. Actually, I hope I never spill it on this either. Looks too nice the way it is. Stan Jibalisco, signing off from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, so long.